is our foreign affairs editor, Robert Parsons, and he joins me now here on set. Hi, Rob. Hi. Uh, Theresa May in that speech took actually quite a long time to get to that core issue of Brexit. Why do you think that was? Well, yes, she did. Uh, and, uh, the main reason for that, I think, is she wanted to establish herself as the leader of the Conservative Party. Uh, and a leader who could be trusted to take Britain confidently through the next stage of the, nego next stage of the negotiations with the European Union over Brexit. She, first of all, she wanted to demonstrate her confidence, uh, because she's been under siege from within the party and from without in the wider Conservative Party in Britain for a considerable amount of time. Hence her rather unusual entry onto the, onto the hall dancing to the strains of Dancing Queen. Not the usual sort of appearance of a leader of the Conservative Party, and her reference to last year, which went disastrously bad, when uh, she almost failed to get through the speech because she was coughing all the way through it and because the sign behind her, the backdrop of the Conservative Party, with Conservative Party slogan on it, started dropping letters here, there and everywhere. So she jokingly refer referred to that just to demonstrate that she's got the confidence, that she's not intimidated by the threat and the problems and the attacks coming from within the party. Uh, she made an appeal for uh, a united Conservative Party, the appeal beyond Conservative Party values to Britain as a whole. She spoke about decency, moderation, patriotism, but not nationalism. And one sensed that behind all this, all the time, she had Boris Johnson in mind, who is one might argue, none of those things. This, I think, was the big point about this. And remember, when she's making a speech like that to the Conservative Party, it's being televised nationwide. So she was addressing not just Conservatives, but the people of Britain at the same time. She did then, Rob, finally get to that issue of Brexit. When she got to it, what do you think her main message was? Well, again, you know, it's a little bit like the first part of the answer I've given you. The two things are complete, com completely interwoven. Uh, her message was that her policy, in other words, the Chequers policy that she's been putting forward with a promise of a free trade deal with the European Union, but, but uh, services being taken control of by, by the United Kingdom, an end to the control of the European Court of Justice in British affairs, uh, an end to free movement of people, and so on and so forth. Uh, seamless border with Ireland. But she's at the same time was saying she's going to do all those things. She, was, she had Boris Johnson as her main target. She was saying that the purpose of this sort of deal that she's trying to get through is to ensure that people who would suffer uh, in, the, in the eventuality promised by Boris Johnson, a hard cut, you know, no free trade with the European Union, those people would suffer in the immediate term. But he's promising in 50 years from now, Britain will be a much better place for it. Her response to that is, I have to think about the British people of today. It's no good saying to them, in 50 years from now, British people will be made better off. They want to know whether they're going to be better her off tomorrow. So that was the essence of her, her, her address to him. But to the European Union, she was saying also, look, this is the deal that we're prepared to, to, to give you, to make to you. If you don't want to accept it, we are prepared to accept no deal rather than a bad deal. There will be no second referendum, she said. We trusted the, the, the voice. We went to the, the, the British people to get their voice. They gave us their answer. It would be wrong to, to, to go for a second referendum. In other words, she was laying her cards pretty firmly down on the table and saying, come on, let's come together in the Conservative Party, work with the material we've got and get a good deal with the European Union, because what I'm proposing to them now is the best deal that Britain can possibly get out of it. Has she done enough to persuade Brussels? We'll have to see. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Robert Parsons there, our foreign affairs uh, editor.